and now to the moment everyone's been waiting for. George? That's right, Taylor Swift right here in Times Square. She has three number one albums in a row and now her newest album, Red. Number four, it's already number one on iTunes after a midnight release. Well, you have done it again. Congratulations. Thank you so much. It seems like you're having a lot of fun here this morning. This is crazy. There's so many of them out there and in here and it's just amazing. I'm so blown away. Well, we are all blown away as well. And, and, and this album, Red, um, you've really branched out here, working with all kinds of, of different partners. And I saw that you called it your most adventurous album yet. What did you mean by that? I think for me with this album, I just, I tended to really explore the edges of what I'm allowed to do and um, exploring kind of pushing myself and taking myself out of my comfort zone, which is writing alone, and going and working with my heroes, songwriters that have influenced me my whole career. It's, it, it really, really kind of challenged me in the best way possible. What's different about writing with someone else? Well, uh, everybody has their own different process. Some people start with like making a track. Some people, like I just grab a guitar and make stuff up. Some people, everybody's got a different way of doing things. And what it felt like was being 22, kind of learning from my absolute heroes and and exploring how they do what they do. And it was really an amazing learning experience. You know, I was just telling you, my little girl's been walking around the house for weeks singing, we are never, ever, ever getting back together. I don't think they understand what it means. Because <laughs> they're seven and nine. Seven and ten, seven and ten, so ten yeah. Catchy. They don't know. No, but I'm glad they're singing it. They though. are <laughs> definitely singing it. Now, I know you're not going to name the man who this was about, but I, I read somewhere that you said it was designed to drive the ex absolutely crazy. What is that about? <laughs> I maybe said that one place, <laughs> maybe, on a bad day. Um, but I think for me, like, music is my way of understanding what I'm feeling. I, when I started writing songs when I was 12, I would, like, run to my room and write songs about a difficult day at school or something like that. And, and it's kind of carried me my whole life and allowed me to kind of filter through really complicated emotions and make them simple. So what comes to you first? The scene, the feeling, the tune? Well, it's always different. It's like sometimes it's a fragment of lyric and melody. Sometimes it's like a background vocal or a post hook or something like that. And it's like the, it's like getting the first puzzle piece. And you have to, at that point, figure out where it fits in, in the grand scheme of things and, and fill in the rest of the song. We have gotten all kinds of questions coming in for you on Twitter. And one of them comes comes from the lucky one, 1313, who wanted to know which song on Red was the hardest to write emotionally. Uh, the song All Too Well was the hardest to write because it took me a long time to filter through everything that I wanted to put in the song. It started out being probably like a 10 minute song, which you can't put on an album. And I had to filter it down to like a story that, that could work in the form of a song and I called my, my friend and co-writer Liz Rose and I said come over we've got to we've got to filter this down and it took me a really long time to get it to its final form. So in some ways are you writing all the time? Yes, all the time. I wrote a new one like two days ago. Wow. It doesn't matter like if I'm preparing for a record or if I'm about to put one out. Writing is just a way that I just live and I write about the way that I'm living. And if you were to write a song about your love life right now, happy song, sad song? I don't really talk about my love life. I kind of sing about it a lot um, because I really think that it sounds more more po poetic and romantic with music behind it. And it's more true to you in that way. Yeah, absolutely. And that's like, you know, my fans know that I'm going to give them the real version of what happened to me in my music. And they know that, you know, what they read on blogs or gossip sites or whatever may or may not be true. And they can kind of tell, like, if it's true or not because they know me. So what have you learned about, <laughs> about how to navigate your whole private life in such a public, when you're, when you're living in such a public fishbowl? Look at all the people out here right now. Well, I don't mind any of that at all. I don't really, there's, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. But you know, there is sort of a pressure to not make a mistake. And I'm at an age where, you know, you're supposed to be like learning lessons and all that and making mistakes and it's okay. But it's, you know, I have to really kind of minimize the mistakes that I make because it's important that I, that I, um, I have these people that count on me. So that's that's part of it that I have come to terms with, you know. Well, I think you're doing pretty well at not Thanks. making too many mistakes. That's nice. Ready for a lightning round? Put lightning you on the round. Yeah, yes. I love GMA lightning hot seat. round. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there it is right there. You're on the hot seat appropriately addressed this morning. Okay, number one, favorite TV show. 
Uh, CSI, Law and Order, Grey's Anatomy, Girls, Mindy Project. Wow, I think there were five there. so right? much TV, you have no idea. <laughs> All good ones right there. First celebrity crush. Taylor Hansen. Taylor, well, you are fast. Yeah. What's your hidden talent? Oh, um, antique shopping and putting together my friends' apartments when they're not there. Lara Spencer, <laughs> did you hear that? Antique shopping. Uh, Go-to comfort food. Oh, um, cinnamon toast crunch cereal or um, pop tarts. Wow, do you know what you share a favorite comfort food with? Who? Robert Pattinson. Wow! Cinnamon toast crunch comfort this food. Is I can't believe news. that I know that, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and what is your favorite place in the whole world and why? My favorite place in the whole world is Nashville because it's my home, it's Music City, it's like everybody there is so artistic and so creative and and nice. Everybody's really friendly, which is good. You are so good at this game. Thank let's you get so some, much. <laughs> let's get some more Twitter questions. We have one from Swiftnest13 and uh, who writes, you've achieved so much so far What's left on your list that you really want to achieve? Lots. Um, I think, <laughs> you know, for me, I would love to, um, I would love to have this album be something that really I'm proud of and put together the tour and have it be a show that's worth people paying their money and spending the evening with us to, to see it, you know? I, I want to make this show better than anything we've done before. Of all the new kinds of music you tried in this album, which one was the the most fun or even the most challenging to you? Well, the one that was the most fun was on this song called I Knew You Were Trouble. And I started it out on piano and I knew that at the end of the chorus I wanted it to have this crazy bass drop. And so I brought it to my co-writers Max Martin and Yohan Shellback who are amazing. And they were able to we just like cre we took this song to places I didn't think that my music would ever go. Your parents have um, have done so much for you, I know, and and they even moved to Nashville many years ago when you wanted to start out singing. And we got another question from Keith Sargent, who wanted to know how your parents are adjusting to your success. <laughs> They're great with it. Um, my dad is like he goes around with all these guitar picks of, from my tour in his pocket and just hand us, hands them to strangers and it's like, hey, I'm Taylor Swift's dad, nice to meet you. <laughs> and he makes friends everywhere he goes and like loves it and my dad's like the friendliest guy in the world and my mom is, is really sweet because she um, she has a gr she has really great taste and she has really logical I I opinions and so I ask her for advice about everything. We're really close. And finally, Judy Berryhill wants to know what in life brings a smile to your face? Oh my God, so much. Um, mostly uh, like cats and um, <laughs> mostly, mostly cats. Mostly cats. Taylor Swift, thank you so much. <laughs> you are going to be back tomorrow, live performance right here in Times Square. And ahead, we're going to reveal the winner of the Taylor Swift contest who's also going to be here tomorrow to see her perform.